with how many bug bounty platforms and bug bounty programs that are out there nowadays, I can see it being a little bit confusing and honestly a little bit scary if you're new to the bug bounty community. So thinking about this, I figured why not make a video and dedicate it on how to pick the right platform for you and talk about how I personally select my targets and share my experience with it to help you overcome these issues and get started with your bug bounty hunting. But before we get into it, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, like this video. It will really help me get my content in front of other people and it will help me grow this channel and we can make more content like this for you guys. So do that and we're gonna jump right into it. The first thing you want to do is, what bug bounty platform do you want to hack on? And honestly, there isn't really a secret on how to select this. It all comes down to personal preference, but there are a number of large organizations or bug money platforms that are more favored in comparison to others. So in the first half of the video, that's what we're gonna talk about. In the second half, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through different things to look at when it comes down to selecting your bug bounty program. So as far as the bug bounty platforms go, you have your top two bug bounty platforms that are global, which is HackerOne and Bug Crowd. They're both very similar. They both have a lot of cool bug bounty programs that are public. For example, on HackerOne, you can see companies like Uber, you can see PayPal, Yahoo, Coinbase, and a bunch of other ones. The thing that I do like about HackerOne though is that they will invite you to more bug bounty programs that are private based on your activity. So that means the more bugs you report, the more invites you get. But they also have Hacker 101, which is a CTF platform. And if you go and solve some CTFs, they invite you to some other bug bounty program. So you can go check it out. That's one of the things that I like about Hacker One is honestly the invite algorithm. It's pretty good and it's based on your activity. Then you also have Bug Crowd, same thing. You have a lot of public programs like a lot of the government organizations. You have Indeed, Tesla, a bunch more. But the thing that I do like about Bug Crowd that I also hack on is that they have this ability to self-enroll into private bug bounty programs based on your activity as well. So instead of getting invited, they allow you to self-enroll yourself based on this metadata that they show you. It shows you what the company's industry is, how much they pay, and they also put requirements that you have to meet in order to qualify. So that's also another cool feature. I enjoy doing these two. And honestly, HackerOne and Buckrat have been around for years and they're known to be the global bug bounty platforms around. But that's not to disqualify Integrity from any of this stuff. Integrity is also another platform you should look into. Not only they will give you access to cool companies like Red Bull, Intel, and a bunch of other European organizations, but they also, from what I heard, are more favored by European hackers because of how easy it is to work with tax laws in Europe. So if you're in Europe, it's a really good choice for you. I'm not saying don't use the other two, but also Integrity could be something to hack on because of the programs that you get access to. And honestly, if you're in Europe and you get European invites, it may be easier for you to hack on them in comparison to Buckrat and Hacker One, where you may get European, American, or Australian companies to hack on. So those are the three. And you also have the other ones, they're smaller ones that I've never used, honestly. There's, yes, we have Hack and Proof Immunify, which is, Immunify is based on smart contracts. So if you wanna hack on smart contracts, Immunify is a great choice. And then you also have the last one that I wanna mention, Synac and Synac is your bug bounty platform that it's a red team, you have to be invited, you have to do an interview, you have to show them that you have the skills to enroll, and they also ask you to sign a non-disclosure agreement, which makes it super private and hard to collaborate and that kind of stuff. So those are all the bug bounty platforms that are out there, and honestly, personally, what I do is I hack on all of them, I'm a part of Synac, I already hack on HackerOne and Bug Crowd. I have a profile on there. And with Integrity, I don't have a lot of experience, but I've hacked on some of their programs and I get invited to some stuff. So when I have time, I dabble a little bit and hack on their programs as well. So honestly, go after all of them. Your best bet is to go and be as active as you can on all these platforms and not put all your eggs in one basket. But you also should be very conscious of what platforms you hack on because the more active you are on a particular platform, the more perks you get. So you kind of have to pick and choose what do you want to do. Maybe you make one of these bug bounty platforms like HackerOne or BugCrowd your primary, then you have a secondary, third, and so on. That was the easy part. So you know how to pick a platform. Honestly, I'm going to say one more time, hack on all of them, but make one of them a primary or secondary and just build your profile and get more and more invites. But when it comes down to selecting an actual program to hack on, that could be a lot more difficult than just selecting a bug bounty platform. And the reason why I say that is there are so many bug bounty programs out there nowadays that it could be confusing on where to look, 
what to hack on, and the process could be a little bit difficult, especially if you're new to the scene. So here is personally what I do. There are a number of different things that play a factor in my bug bounty choices, but the, the biggest one is the bounty amount. I mean, you can obviously see a lot of these things based on the data that these platforms give you. On the side, usually there is a part that says what is the average bounty, and most of these companies are also transparent, and they have the bounty amounts for each different category. The reason why I look at that is because if I spend five, six, eight hours and I only find one medium bug, I want to make sure it's worth my time. So if I get a medium at $500 for five hours of work, that's about $100 an hour versus if it was only $100, that's only $20. And that's not a lot of money to me, especially because I've been doing bug bounties for so long. But if you're new, that could be the deciding factor of what you want to do. The second thing I do is I look at the company's scope, how big is the company, how old is the company, and how many assets they have in scope. And I don't do that because I rely on automation and a lot of recon, but it just means that I want to look at a company that's huge, that could have a lot of applications, have a lot of accusations, and that kind of stuff. And again, you can look at that by going into the scope, but then you also want to look at how often they're adding assets into the scope of their bug bounty programs and how many of them are actually in scope. So for example, if you look at Facebook or Meta, if you look at Google, they pretty much say everything they own is in scope unless it was acquired recently. So they give it a six months of blackout. Those are really good programs to go look at because they have a ton of assets, ton of microsites, ton of different companies, and it makes it more fun to stick to that one particular company. But they also have old legacy sites like maybe your Amazon or your Yahoo or PayPal that have been around for ages. And you can maybe find some application that's been around from 10 years ago that could still be vulnerable because it relies on that old code or for that old technology to be a part of the core site. So just keep that in mind. There's a lot of things there, I know. But you really want to think about do you want to do a new application, old application, a big company, and so on. So those are the two main things so far that we've talked about. One is the bounty amount, and two, the organization size and its scope. And the next thing you want to look at is how old is this bug bounty program? And the reason why I say that is I really don't care about the program being on a platform or around for years and thinking about it as there are no bugs. That's not the case. Just because a company's been around, it doesn't mean that you can't find bugs in their applications. Keep in mind that these companies are actively creating more code and more applications day by day. So that just because other hackers have looked at it, it doesn't mean that there aren't any bugs. But the reason why I said that is because you want to make sure that these companies are actively communicating through their bug bounty platform. Are they actively looking at bugs? Are they actively paying? Are they actively actually triaging these vulnerabilities? Because you don't want to submit to a program that could be dead and the bug bounty platforms missed it and didn't close it out. So keep that in mind. Again, all of this is doable by looking at the program itself. And if you come across a bug bounty program that's not responding, ignore it and move on. And last but not least, this is probably my favorite thing. And it's the biggest part that comes into my hacking. Honestly, this is the thing that made me more successful with a lot of my hacking is hacking on a program that I enjoy their product or their company itself. So if you go on my Hacker One profile, one of the things that you will notice is that companies like Airbnb, Rockstar Game, Valve, and a few others are, are the number one programs that I've hacked on. And that's not because they paid a lot. I mean, that did play a factor in it. But the reason why I'm hacking on these programs is that I actually enjoy their products or actually have had an experience with it. And the reason why it plays a huge role into my hacking is as a hacker yourself, the number one thing you want to do is you want to get an understanding of what the application does in depth and understand what it doesn't do. And you want to be able to do exactly that. So, for example, if I'm an avid Airbnb user, I know exactly what the application is supposed to do, what is it not supposed to do, what different roles exist. For example, they have guests, they have the host, they have businesses and that kind of stuff. And I already have an understanding of where to look for and what to look for as a hacker. So that gives you a huge advantage over other users that may have never used or seen this application in the past. And honestly, who doesn't want to say, hey, I've used this application, but I've also helped secure and hack into their program using bug bounties. And bonus points, if you're very, very new and you want to just get into bug bounties and you're not sure where to go, my recommendation is hack on a VDP or a VUN disclosure program where you're not getting paid. That's because these programs don't have a lot of competition. 
a lot of these top hackers who are doing this professionally and making a lot of money aren't going to waste their time on these VDPs where there's no money involved. And doing that gives you an advantage where there's not going to be a lot of competition. And honestly, it helps you build your skill sets more and more. And the more bugs you find, the more active you become on that platform. And obviously, you're going to get more and more invites. So keep that in mind. My personal opinion is if you're new, you should start with a VDP, get really good at your skill sets, and then move on to a bug bounty later on using all the techniques and tricks or tips that I gave out during this video. All right, that's it. That was the entire video. Do me a favor, drop me a comment. Let me know if this helps. Let me know what programs you hack on. Do you look for certain things like I mentioned in this video? Is there anything I missed that hackers should look for when they're looking for a target or a bug bounty platform? Let me know what else you want to see in the comments and I will see you all in the next video. Peace.